the touch, but uh, it didn't work that way. Uh, you know, so it allowed them to come back at us, and uh, we made things difficult for ourselves today. But like I said, you know, uh, we come away with a win. We can be pleased with that, uh, but we can work then again on the performance. The difference in the score obviously was your try, your five pointer, your momentous 20, 30, 40 yards. How far was it? Tell us it. It's down here. Have a look. One try later than the other, but it was the same try later than the other. <laughs> thing, but, uh, Oh, good, sorry. Here it comes down here. Yeah, we, we, nice uh, break from Dwayne Peel before, oh, I think. Oh, it was fantastic. You know, the boys got us in a great area, and uh, they just left uh, a little gap there. You know, we tried to come over, and uh, there you go. Oh, it must have been oh a good half a yard. You're actually yeah. standing in the in goal area when you picked it up by the look of it, weren't you? Um, I can't say. You know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, uh, too far for me to run if it's any further. Home games in this competition, Scott, as you well know, um, are must-win games. How much pressure were you and the guys feeling coming into this game, knowing that you really had to win it? We said, you know, two years ago we lost you to Gloucester and we, we put ourselves on the back foot. We went to King's Home in the last game with pressure on ourselves where we could have snuck a victory. But now, we, you know, uh, it was vital that we got to win any type of win, you know, and we did that tonight. And uh, now we can go away, we can uh, reflect on this game, you know, and look forward to Borders next week, knowing that, uh, you know, we've got the points in the bag. Stuart Barnes, up in the commentary box, in giving you the Man of the Match award, described you thus. Can I quote this oh, to you? Yeah. A thing of boisterous beauty. Oh, beauty I'm not so sure about. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, but boisterous. Barnes, yeah. Many red wines again. But, uh, How do you keep doing it at your age, though, Scott? Uh, I'm only 31. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not that old. I'm not the oldest boy on the block. But uh, I just enjoy it. You know, it's a great atmosphere. You know, a, a packed uh, Stradi Park. There's a, a, a great atmosphere down here. And it's, uh, you know, it's a great uh, region to play for. Apologies for prematurely ageing you in compensation. Here we are. Heineken, man of the match. You, you know what that's for, don't you? Uh, I, I might find some interview with that. that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Well played, Tony. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Better not fill it with too much because he's in the studio with us tomorrow. But uh, 31, but looking very much on top of his game. Yeah, he's a fantastic player, especially in a tight game like that where there's not a lot happening anywhere else. You know, Scott's in the middle of things. He's, he's making those hard yards and he's also picking up a crucial try. So, Nathalie, do they look nervous tonight? Do you think? Do you think they're a bit of a scrappy game? Yeah, I think Stephen Jones summed it up there. He said it was a tense, nervous affair, and it was. I mean, they had enough sort of momentum and ball and um, uh, seniority out there to win that game by, the, by half time. But, you know, to Northampton's credit, they hung on. Uh, a few tactical errors, I felt, that they could have played a little bit more down in, in uh, the Clenethley territory, but it just didn't happen. Should the Scars have closed it out earlier, Dowie? I think so. I think they had the, the power. They had uh, certain decisions in, that, um, in the scrum I was scratching my head about because they did have the power in the scrum area. The line out, they, they missed Wyatt when he went off for that injury, unfortunately, but they scrapped it. But unfortunately, forcing a few passes, the ball went down. They did have the territory, but they'll be happy. As Scott said, you know, they've got the points. You can't get them back. They can work on things. So, uh, you know, they, they'll be happy with that. OK, let's get another word from the Scarlets. Their director of rugby, Gareth Jenkins, is with Graham. Gareth Jenkins, have you breathed out yet? Uh, it was a bit tense in the end. Um, not the most comfortable uh, last 50 minutes of experience, I've got to admit. How much of the game plan did your team actually get through tonight? How many of their patterns did they impose on the game? Not as many as we'd like to. Um, I think where it started to go wrong was the fact that we didn't deal very well with the kicking game and the kicking of the hand game. Uh, our players are saying that they were really pissed off with the ball and, um, <laughs> um, and it had a, a detrimental effect really on the, on the way we didn't manage our kicking game. We kicked the ball 42 times and I think we got it off the park 11. And that kept them in the game. Um, and we're pretty disappointed with ourselves as much as we've won this game. I think there was more in it for us. You were saying there about the ball. I mean, what's wrong with the ball? What's the problem with it? It's a new one, isn't it? What's the problem with it? Well, it's a new ball and it doesn't fly. It hasn't got this ability to, uh, to, to carry itself through. It dies in the air and uh, it, 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 it felt like that as far as I was concerned watching the game. There was no balls just getting going off the park and it's a bit unusual because our two kickers, Barry Davis and Stephen Jones, have usually got, um, got plenty of length on their ball, but, uh, on their kicks, but it didn't work, us, didn't work out for us tonight. Did you feel your team could have done with a tad more composure when they got down towards the green zone at the Northampton end? Absolutely. Uh, and credit to Northampton, they came here with a great defence and uh, they put us under pressure and we weren't able to build the phases and keep, keep the ball. You know, uh, turnover was expensive for us. In the tackle area, they turned us and knocked us on maybe six, six times and credit to them for that. But we are f pretty frustrated, really, because we did get to the killer zone and we haven't killed it. Irritated too, maybe, that you didn't... Um deprive them of the bonus point. Well, they're going to be tight, aren't they, in these group matches this season? Absolutely, and uh, they've got something out of this game tonight. You know, they've, they've, they're going away, they're going home with something, they're going home with a point, and uh, I think that they were, they were aware of that. Uh, they recognised, uh, with a couple of minutes to go, that the important thing really was to take points home, and they've done it 
the, and, and credit to them for that. In terms of the, the campaign as a whole, Gareth, how well prepared do you think the they are to go one stage further than they've ever been before? Um, I, I think we've got a game that we can, um, we, you know, we can, we can improve on. I think there's more in us than you've seen tonight. Um, I was happy with our scrum. Um, our line-out, particularly in the second half, having lost Wyatt, uh, put a lot of pressure on the Northampton line-out, and that uh, suggests to me that uh, you know we can we can create pressure for opposition teams. Um, but uh, a little disappointed, really, that we, we we didn't impose ourselves more in this game than uh, than, than I felt as if uh, we should have. Thanks for your time. Now, good luck with the borders next week. Thanks very much. Nice to meet you again. Take care, Gareth. A few interesting points he's bringing up there. Michael, uh, no disrespect to Dow, you know, disrespect <laughs> to you, Jonathan, as the resident in-house kicker. Um, the point he's bringing up about the ball there, did you feel it was a little bit flat or not flying correctly out? Yeah, it was sometimes. Um, we saw Paul Grayson kick one in the second half there that went 60 or 70 metres and didn't seem to have any problem flying yet. When sometimes when Clenethley kickers kicked it, it sounded dead uh, when they were kicking out of hand. But particularly Stephen Jones, when he was kicking for goal, there was a couple of times there where he fell short and was well within his range. And I think the ball seems to have a very small sweet spot on it. Grayson kicks with the ball upright when he kicks for goal. Stephen Jones more hits for on the end. And mm. just seems to, it sounded dead out there as well. And, uh, you know, maybe there's a, something wrong with that ball, a bad batch or something, but uh, certainly something for the kickers to work on. Mm. All right, let's uh, get the views of the Northampton coach. Now, Wayne Smith again is with Greg. Simon, thank you very much. Wayne, you've come out of it with a bonus point. Should you have had more? No, I don't think so. Um, if, if you look at the game objectively, um, they had us under a lot of pressure, particularly early on. Uh, it's a tough place to come and play. Um, having said that, we showed a lot of spirit. Um, we could have scored a couple of tries. You know, we were, we were sort of that far away, and uh, and that would have been interesting. Would have put a, put a bit more heat on them. But in the end, uh, you know, we had to really play for that bonus point, kick the goal, and and try and play territory down there for the last two or three minutes, so that you know, so that we at least came away from Stradley Park or something. It was an unusual game from a Northampton point of view because this season you've been scoring lots of tries and the defence has been a little, if I could put it politely, loose. Tonight the defence was pretty good apart from the first five minutes and attacking-wise you couldn't get it over the game line. I mean, you had, as you say, there were a few golden chances in there that went begging, weren't there? Yeah, I, I think once we got our structure, we didn't put too many of our sequences together. Once we did and, and spread the, the Clinethley defence, it, it created some holes and, and people like Mark Robinson and Andrew Blaise were able to go through. Um, it's, it's probably those one or two breaks that you in the game that you get to convert and we weren't able to do that, but um, yeah, a bit more pleased with the defence. 